I said to him, I get Chris, because we're <laughs> splitting them. Because I, I got <laughs> Steve. Oh, great, thanks. Um, I have three basic questions for you. Um, okay. I know that you've adapted, uh, well, not adapted yourself, but you've directed movies that have come from books. Hey, hold on, um, let me get those guys to quiet down if you're doing it. Oh, Sorry. It's all right. If you're shooting. Sure. Sorry, I just didn't I'm want excited. I didn't want your question to be to be drowned out. I appreciate so, that. Okay. That's a director for you. Um, you know, in working on something like the Golden Compass. Right. You know, that was a book, okay. Mm -hmm. What what kind of process do you go through when you're working on something that people already have a really good idea about? Mm -hmm. How how does that make it harder or easier for you? Well, I mean in some ways it's easier because you know that a lot of people are gonna come and see it and that's uh, that's great if you're a director <laughs> sure. because a lot of directors make movies and it takes a long time and you spend a lot of other people's money and then nobody shows up. Uh, that's a bad feeling. Uh, but you know with, with, uh, with new men that people are going to come and see it. On, on the other hand, they're, they're going to bring a lot of expectations mm -hmm. and everyone who reads the book has a mental image in their mind of, of how it should look. Now, uh, there's no way that I can meet all of their expectations or right. precisely mirror everything that's in their minds. All I can do is treat it as though I were a fan uh, with respect for the book and sort of bring to life with, uh, by hiring all the right people, by working with the very best CGI people and cinematographers to make it as, as beautiful as possible and to make it as exciting as possible. Well, you've done a great job. I think thank the locations you. really help too, oh, obviously, they did. They being did. very lush here and then very cold there. And, yeah. You know. um, there, yeah, there's an amazing transition between the Pacific Northwest and those environments. And then when we go to Italy, uh, suddenly there's this incredible burst of sunlight. Uh, and we're shooting in Monte Pulciano, this amazing, beautiful hillside town. So uh, it really has the feeling of this kind of big epic, uh, and it's great that we were able to go and shoot in Italy, and and so the kind of the scope of the series expands in the course of this movie. Now I'm assuming that that it was kind of nice in that there's already been a first movie, so a lot mm. of those expectations that people were worried about, there's something for you to build on. But mm. at the same time, I'm sure the pressures even higher because it's a sequel to a very beloved book. Mm. And you already had some principal guys cast, and yeah. you're normally more pretty involved with the casting too, right? Yeah, I care a lot about casting, um, but I really loved the cast that I was inheriting. I mean, that's part of the reason that I did it, was I thought that, that Rob and Kristen and Taylor were so great. Mm -hmm. uh, so, frankly, that took a lot of the work away. And I find auditions really embarrassing anyway. So, <laughs> I realized I had to do... It's good to hear. The, I, it was like a great moment where I realized I'd have to sit through fewer auditions. Um, and uh, yes, uh, big expectations, um, but what I had to do was just impose a total media blackout on myself while I was shooting the movie. No pressure. Uh, and <laughs> because there was enough to worry about already, but then once we finished shooting, um, I started kind of checking out Twitter and some of the fan sites, and uh, a lot of the footage that was getting out there and that we were showing to fans was really meeting a lot of uh, approval, and that made me feel great. Tell me about this orientation guide? Yeah. Or is this it? Uh, no, it's not <laughs> just the book. Um, I wanted the, uh, I mean, as the, kind of the new kid uh, on the block, I wanted the actors to know what kind of movie I thought I was making and what kind of movie I discussed making with my cinematographer and with my production designer so that uh, they had a, a sense of who I was what my intentions were and what we were all supposed to be after. And you'd be surprised how, how rarely that's actually done in, in the movies. People just mm. sort of show up on the first day and just start shooting without any notion of what you're going to end up at. And I thought that in order to make this the best movie possible, we really needed to all be on the same page as it were. In working on a movie that was a book, do you, do you want your folks to read it? Or yeah, but I can't force them to. Uh, <laughs> but they sure do. Sure can. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'd have to teach classes. <laughs> uh, no, I mean there's no assigned reading, but um, I think uh, I mean I think that the the actors are responsible enough to read the book, and because they need to to get to know their character. Um, you know, I'd also love crew members to read the book as well, mm. uh, and primarily I need to be familiar as possible with the book. But also I had Stephanie Meyer as um, you know, an ally and someone I could call up on the phone or email anytime there was a question about a detail in, in, in the movie. Okay, I'm out. Sorry. <laughs> thank you <laughs> very much. I thank appreciate you. it. No, it was a pleasure. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you.